Buenos días o oh, buenas tardes. We're in Spanish 2, Unit 1, Week 3, Unidad 1, Semana 3. Bienvenidos. Welcome. Okay, just a quick review here. With the assignments are not submitted uh, in Canvas, uh, they will receive a grade of zero after the due date until you submit it. So if you actually submit the uh, the work, it will um, count um, with the grade and you'll be fine once you submit it. Now, if it's an assignment, like a text entry, um, some upload media recording, like a voice recording, um, or a shared link that you submitted, you will see it once the teacher has graded it. So you may not see an update right away on those things. But this is why it's so important to make sure you get your stuff in on time. And you want to see a what if scenario, you could just go to grades in Canvas. It's on the left side, just click on grades, and you could actually put in scores yourself to see what your grade would be. Now it's not going to change your grade, but it will see what would happen if you had certain grades in there. So it's a very useful tool for you. And the unit one test is next week. So uh, it's in Canvas and it will be during the same testing window that we have on our student calendar. This is the uh, the 26th through the 30th of September. El 26 hasta el 30 de, no, de septiembre. Uh, testing window for Canvas will always match the Excelsior calendar, of course. And Unit 2 becomes available after Unit 1. For Duolingo, make sure that you've uh, talked to your Spanish teacher if you'll be using Duolingo and show your progress, but always uh, check with your Spanish teacher first. And uh, a little review from last week. Uh, the Que Tienen Que Hacer um, assignment. I wanted to mention uh, you should check check the instructions for every assignment you do. It's very important to take time to look at examples. What in the, what what are they asking for? What's it asking you to do? You can resubmit an assignment to get a better grade. Um, your teacher usually will leave a comment, and you can resubmit if it's still within the same unit. Um, so let me give you an example here under the que tienen que hacer assignment in Unit One Week Two that was last week. We had this this question. ¿Qué tienen que hacer estas personas en sus clases? What do these people have to do in their classes? So we're talking about their obligation, right? Using tener, using the verb tener and que to talk about what people have to do. Write what they have to do with a different activity for each person. Supply any verb you like. So an example is mi amiga, my friend. Okay, so mi amiga. Mi amiga tiene que usar la computadora. My friend has to use the computer. All right? So that's how that works. Um, this, you know, uh, this is a different um, assignment that uses the same concept, using tener que to talk about what people have to do. So use, use the pictures. And say, so uh, look at the example too. Gloria tiene que dar un discurso en la clase de historia. Right? So Gloria has to give a speech in history class or give a presentation. Right? So number one would be Isabel tiene que. Right? It's the same thing. Isabel tiene que. And it looks like she has to do a lab. So Isabel tiene que, or maybe she's doing an experiment, right? Isabel tiene que hacer un experimento en el laboratorio. All right? So it's a logical sentence, right? She's got to do it in the laboratory. Luis, number two, Luis, is obviously in English class. You see the word Shakespeare at the, on the back here. And it looks like he's writing. Maybe he's writing an essay. Luis Tiene que escribir un ensayo. Okay. So there are some examples and and to let you get going on those. So your answer should look very similar to the example that you see. 
All right, and then we do this on purpose so that you know what you need to do so you can complete your work and get a good grade for it. So make sure you're always paying attention to the examples and instructions. Okay, they're there for a reason. Now, what if you just don't understand? Okay, and sometimes that happens. It doesn't seem to be clear. You're not sure, or it's confusing. So instead of commenting on the assignment, I don't know what to do, why don't you look carefully at the instructions first? And ask other students, ask your teacher. Now, if you're in the classroom, it's definitely a good resource just to ask your teacher. They're right there in the classroom. If you've read the instructions carefully and you're still not what sure to, what, uh, what, uh, you're still not sure what to do, email your teacher. Make sure that you email the level of Spanish you're in, the assignment name, the week it's from, like Spanish 2, Unit 1, Week 3. Okay. Also, providing the direct link to the assignment is very helpful because then your teacher will be able to click on it and see exactly what you're talking about. Ask uh, specific questions and we can get uh, an answer to you quickly. And this also can help others because some, some students may be confused um, and uh, it may be something where we need to change uh, instructions, directions to clarify. Okay, another really important thing from this week is the STEM changing verbs. It's a review. Uh, last year you worked on this. It's called the present tense, right? You stress that second to last syllable in Spanish for the present tense. And this is a review of those verbs that have the, the, the vowel doesn't have enough to hold it up, so to speak. And so it splits it splits our changes. So poder, that O, in the present tense, okay, when it's stressed, becomes UE. So you get puedo. When you emphasize that syllable, it gets a UE instead of an O. Puedo. But when you say podemos, when you use the nosotros form, it doesn't split because you're not emphasizing that second to last syllable on the O. The O is not the second to last syllable in that case. So you do not split it. It's podemos. So puedo, podemos. Entender works the same way. In this case, the E. That's the second to last syllable. When it gets the stress, it splits into IE. So you get entiendo, entiende, entienden. But the nosotros form, you notice it doesn't change because that E is no longer stressed. So it, be, it just stays the same. Entendemos, we understand. And then dormir is another example too of O changed to the UE. I'm sleeping would be duermo or I sleep would be duermo. However, in the nosotros form, you, you see that's not changing because it's not stressed anymore. And we talked about this last year. It's very important. This is how Spanish works. Dormimos is we sleep. Dormimos. No change because the O is no longer stressed. Now, here's a review of common stem changing verbs, common patterns of stem changing verbs in Spanish. So make sure you review those. So after you're dropping the endings, you might have that change at the at the beginning change in the stem okay this is a good way to see them all together like for example at the top you have poder to, to be able to right it means can puedo puedes puede podemos there's that have that the o is not stressed in that case so therefore it does not split and then pueden at the end now just because some verbs behave like this doesn't mean they all do. That's certainly not true. It depends on what's around that vowel. Okay? For example, in the verbs like in a word verb like comprender, comprender, you don't change anything because there's enough around that e to hold it up. There's the m p r at one end and you have the n d on the other end. So comprendo, comprendes, comprende. It doesn't change, but words like poder and 
empezar, entender. They do. There's not enough to hold up that vowel, so it splits. So the best way is just to memorize. Empezar to begin. You have empiezo. Empiezas. It's an AR verb, of course. So the A stays there at the end, right? Empieza. Empezamos. We begin and then empiezan. They begin. Now look at the last one. Pedir. The E changes to an I in this case. So it becomes pido. Pedir is to ask for or to order something, right? Pido. Pides. Pide. But in the nosotros it goes back to the E because you're not stressing it anymore, right? Pedimos. And then the last is piden. Now, what's a vosotros? That's only used in Spain. So we will ignore it. You'll see it's a slightly different color as well. It's only used in Spain. and uh, But that's, those are the forms. If you would like to look at them a little closely, more closely, you can. But it would be pronounced for, for poder. It would be podéis. And then empezáis. And pedís. For the ER, IR and AR uh, forms there. And by the way, you'll see these also... Um, go in a form of kind of looks like a shoe. So a lot of people call these shoe verbs because of the ones that change make that pattern, but the nosotros and vosotros don't change because you don't have that stress in the same place, on the same letter. Okay, recuerdas, do you remember? Here's some common verbs that do have changes in them that we did talk about last year. But here's some, just here's a review. You have um, the verbs that have the O that turn into UE, like poder and dormir. We have almorzar, to eat lunch. So it would be almuerzo, almuerza, almuerzas. A que hora almuerzas? What time do you eat lunch? Costar is to cost. Cuesto, right? You usually want to say cuesto. Usually it's cuesta, isn't it? Cuesta or cuesta. And cuánto cuesta? How much does it cost? And then dormir. You get duermo, as we've seen. Duermo, duermes. And then uh, uh, jugar. The U changes to UE when it's stressed. Juego. Juegas. Juega. And the E becomes I in entender. Entiendo. To understand. Pensar. To think. Pienso. I think, prefiero, right? quiero, and that's the E to IE, and you know quiero, especially from last year, and sometimes the E changes to I, servir, repetir, pedir, and decir, to say, so uh, sirvo, right, sirvo, I serve, sirve, repito, Repito, uh, digo, dices, right? And of course you have pedir, pido, pide, etc. So these are just important verbs to work with in Spanish. Now, I'll um, post a video for you here on the stem changing verbs. verbs. It is a canvas, but I'll link it here for you. And so just go ahead and click on that video and get yourself started. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. That's all for this week. Um, nos vemos.